<laughs> Hi guys. Uh, so I, oh, this is a really weird thing to say out loud because I've been sitting on this news for at least six months and I've been sitting on this pattern for about a year. But I got into nitty. <laughs> Yeah, I got a pattern published in Nitty, and I just can't really fathom that. Anyway, okay, sorry. I should probably start from the start. If we haven't met before, I'm Katrina Walser. I am a knitting designer and teacher based in Sydney, Australia, and if any of you have seen my wardrobe walkthrough, so the first part, uh, you'll know that a lot of the patterns that I knit when I first started knitting were from Knitty Magazine. Uh, there were so many that I actually had like a running tally in my video of how many patterns I had knit from Knitty. And it's a pattern on Knitty. It's another Knitty pattern. Uh, this is going to be a trend. Again, from Knitty. I told you this was going to be a trend. And once again, it is a Knitty pattern. Uh, again, on Knitty. And so, if any of you have never seen it before, uh, Knitty is an online magazine. It's a free knitting magazine. And it just has these, like, ridiculously high-quality patterns that are just completely free. And it was really how I got into knitting back when I was in uni. Like, I... Mom had taught me how to knit when I was in primary school, but I sort of really ramped up when I was in uni and it was just sort of hard to find good, reliable, free knitting patterns. And then I found Knitty Magazine and they just have all these beautiful patterns that are just free. And so I started using a lot of them um, and that's really how I got back into knitting. So... Ever since I started designing, one of my main goals has been to get a pattern into knitting. It's such an old goal that I actually wrote it down in my blog post. I had a 2017 goals blog post um, that I wrote at the end of 2016, which was the first year that I started designing. And it literally says, I want to get into knitting next year. And so now it's 2021. <laughs> So it's been a long time coming, but I did it. And I'm just like really excited, like so excited. So this is it. It's called Quilted because it looks like a quilt, which I will show you in a sec, but uh, it's a big shrug and it's so warm. So I made this last June maybe, and I really wanted to include it in the 2020 section of my wardrobe walkthrough, but I just wasn't allowed to tell you yet because usually when you get published in a magazine, they don't want you to talk about it until it's actually come out. But the pattern went live, so I can talk to you about it now. Uh, and it's a big shrug that is really simple to make. So I wanted to make this video to show it off a little bit and to share the good news with you, but then also just as like a bit of a supplement in case you're trying to knit the pattern and you need a little bit of extra help or need a little bit of extra explanation, I figured I'd make this to walk through how the shrug actually works. Before we get into the actual pattern walkthrough, I wanted to say a very big thank you to all of you who have subscribed and supported me so far. So this channel is only a month old. I posted my first video four weeks ago and I already have 100 subscribers. In fact, I think there are like 115 as of today. And I just didn't think it would happen this quickly. Um, so I'm really excited that you're all here. Whether you have been like following me on Instagram for a while or that you just stumbled across my channel via YouTube, thank you so much for being here and watching this. If you haven't subscribed yet and you do want to keep following along, make sure you subscribe below and introduce yourself in the comments. Um, let me know who you are and where you're from. 
Obviously, I'm in Australia. Well, actually, I don't know if that's obvious. People tell me my accent's sort of ambiguous. But anyway, I'm in Australia, uh, and so I'd love to know whether you're also a fellow Aussie or if you are somewhere else overseas. So yeah, just let me know a little bit about yourself and where you're hailing from, and it'll be really great to get to know you all a little bit better. Uh, so this is Quilted, and it's called that because I got the inspiration for it from a picture I saw online of a quilt from Nancy Petway, who was a quilter in a place called G's Bend, I think. And so it was an area or a town where a lot of people made all these beautiful quilts. I'll put up a link to some more info about it uh, in the description box down below. And so she made this beautiful quilt that just had these like sections on a diagonal and I wanted to recreate that in knitting because I thought it would be fun. but. I also thought it would be a bit too on the nose to just make it a blanket, so I figured out how to turn it into a shrug. So let's walk through how to make the shrug. So the first thing you're going to need is the pattern itself. This isn't going to be a full explanation for how to knit the shrug. It's mostly a supplement to the pattern, like I said. And so we'll go over how it's generally constructed and some of the finer points that you might need more info on. But you do need the pattern. So there is a link to Nitty down in the description box below that'll take you straight to the page for this pattern. And then you can print it out or open it up on your phone or your computer or whatever you want to do. Now, I am going to be walking through a lot of the finer details, which I do worry will make it sound like the pattern is quite complicated, but it's actually really simple. So. If you are a beginner knitter, I'm going to be explaining a lot of different options and changes you can make to the pattern. But if you're someone who just wants very explicit instructions and like a lot of hand holding, the pattern is written as a very beginner friendly one and it does spell out a lot of the information. So if you think you'll just get confused by me going on about different options and stuff, just don't watch this. It's really fine. <laughs> The pattern is completely self-contained, so go off and do that, but if you do want to find out a little bit more about some different bits and pieces, or you think you need some clarification about how the pattern is constructed, then stick around and have a watch, and just don't get too daunted when I start introducing different options for things you can do. Just follow the construction notes that I give, but stick to the pattern for the like specifics on colors and yarn weights and stuff like that. Okay. So to make the shrug, there are four main components. First off, you have to do some setup, which is to take some measurements, and then you make what's called a 10 stitch blanket, which forms the main body of the shrug. Then you sew up some seams up the sides, and then you add on the sleeves. And so we'll go through each of those one by one now. So step one is to take some measurements. So one of my favorite things about this pattern is that there are no set sizes. It's completely customizable to your body in whatever beautiful shape or size it is. Because of that though, you do need to take some measurements. So there's three quick measurements you need to take, but it's best if you do it with someone else because it's a bit awkward to take some of these by yourself. So the first thing you need is your wingspan from elbow to elbow. So you hold your arms out to the side and then you run a tape measure from your elbow across the back of your shoulders to your other elbow like that. The second measurement you need is the elbow circumference, so around here. And the third measurement you need is the length from the inside of your elbow to wherever you want the sleeves to stop. So my sleeves stop just below the knuckle of my thumb, but you can make them as long or short as you like. So find the section in the pattern where you write those measurements down because there is a little bit of maths that you have to do to the measurements, but it's very, very simple. There's one multiplication and one subtraction you have to do. It's spelled out very clearly in the pattern. Uh, use a calculator if you need to, that's totally fine. Once you have those numbers, you just write them down in the part of the pattern that has space for them, and you will be referencing back to those measurements later on as you knit the garment. Then step two is to make the main part of the cardigan, which is based off of a pattern called the 10 stitch blanket. So the 10 stitch blanket is a very popular pattern. It's got like several thousand projects on Ravelry and it was originally written by Frankie Brown. 
And so I do have to give a really big shout out to Frankie because she very graciously let me reproduce a lot of the instructions for the 10 stitch blanket into quilted. Frankie does collect donations on behalf of the Children's Liver Disease Foundation. So all of her patterns, including the original 10 stitch blanket pattern are free. But if you do appreciate quilted or the 10 stitch blanket pattern, please, please go donate on Frankie's behalf. And there is a link to where you can do that down below in the description box. Because it is such a popular pattern, there are a lot of support videos if you need help on the finer details for how to actually make the blanket section of Quilted. And so I will link to one of my favorite ones up here. There is one main change I made to the 10 stitch blanket pattern though, and that is that it's only actually a six stitch blanket in this case. So I wanted to fit as many colors as I could into my cardigan. And because of that, I wanted the stripes to be a little bit thinner. And so instead of making them 10 stitches wide, I made them six stitches wide. And so the instructions in Quilted are a tiny bit different to the instructions in the original pattern. What I do want to talk you through though is the different choices you can make around colors and fibers. So a large part of my motivation in designing Quilted was to create a pattern that you could use all of your scraps up on because I have so many scraps, like so many scraps. Even after making this whole cardigan, I still have a whole bucket full of scraps. But because of that, I really wanted it to be quite flexible in terms of different colors and materials and things that you could use. So in the pattern, there are some very spelled out directions for what sort of colors and fibers you should use. And so again, if you're a beginner, just follow those. But for the rest of you, if you would like to hear about what I did for mine and how it differed from the pattern, then I'll go over that now. So the first thing is in color choices. So if you look at either the Ravelry projects or the 10 stitch blanket hashtag, you'll see that there are so many different things you can do with a 10 stitch blanket in terms of how you choose your colors, where you place them, whether you change colors in the middle of a strip or not in the middle of a strip, whether you use solid yarn or variegated yarn, you can make it look really, really different. And this is the part where you can go to town with your creativity. Do whatever you like, change colors whenever you want, make it one main solid color if that's what you wanna do as well. But if you do want to make the final shrug look like mine, the thing that's gonna make the most difference is how and when you change colors. So I have very specific instructions for this in the pattern, but some of the simple rules that I followed when I was constructing my blanket are, first off, you don't change colors in the middle of a strip. Always do an entire strip from corner to corner in one color. Do the corner turn and then change colors at the beginning of the next strip. There were points where I ran out of yarn before the corner turn. Because it's a scrappy project, there's no guarantees about how far your yarn is gonna go in a particular scrap. There are some guidelines in the pattern for how to weigh your yarn to make sure you get to the end of a strip. But if you do start to run out, you can change colors before you turn the corner, but don't do it in the, right in the middle of the strip. And then the second rule that I followed is that I chose two corners. So in my case, it was the top right corner and the bottom left corner. And I always changed colors at those corners. At the other two corners, I just sort of like decided either I kept going with the same color or I changed colors. And that's how you get that nice distinct diagonal line running across the middle of the cardigan. And that's the best way to make sure that it looks like mine does. Oh, and the other thing that I should note is that you will be changing colors a lot if you want it to look like this. Like every strip, you change color essentially. So I would highly recommend watching Stephen West's Weaving Stephen video. I think that's what he calls it, which is a tutorial on how to weave the ends in as you go. Uh, there's a link to it in the pattern. There's also a link to it in the description box down below. And definitely do that. Weave the ends in as you go because otherwise you'll be weaving ends in forever at the end of it and you'll hate it. So the other important choice you need to make with the main section of your cardigan are the fibers that you use. So in terms of weight, it recommends in the pattern to use mostly 
10 ply or worsted weight yarn. I will admit that in mine, I used all different weights. It was mostly 10 ply, but I also used other things as well. I didn't do anything bigger, but for smaller weights, what I did is that for 10 ply and 8 ply, which is worsted or DK, I knitted single stranded. For 4 ply, which is fingering weight, I knitted it with the yarn held double. And for 2 ply, which is lace weight, I knitted it with either the yarn held triple or quadruple. I can't really remember. Um, so what I would recommend is that if you are playing around with the different weights of yarn that you use, stick to the same needle size and then just experiment with how many strands you need to hold together. It is a really easy thing to undo. So if you get part of the way into a strip and you're really hating it, just rip it back. Um, there's only six stitches that you need to pick up back onto your needle once you've finished ripping back. So it's a really easy pattern to experiment with and then frog small sections back with. And the other big decision you need to make is around the fiber content of the yarn that you use. So I would personally recommend sticking mostly to wool and acrylic, but I did use some other fibers in mine. So this purple here is cotton and the red in the very, very middle of the jacket is some sort of wool and silk blend, I think. But if you are experimenting with other fibers, just because of the weight of the jacket and the way the garter stitch sits, I would recommend sticking to acrylic and wool for at least three quarters of the total amount of yarn that you use. Don't do more than a quarter in, especially in cotton. So you make this 10 stitch blanket and you keep going until you hit a particular width that's explained in the pattern based on that shoulder to shoulder measurement that you took. And when you're done, you bind off and you do have to block it. So I would really recommend blocking your project at this point because it will be quite warped, especially if you use lots of different types of fibers and a lot of different types of yarns. And so you really want to block it just to make sure that it's a nice sort of squared off square uh, and that'll help you with construction afterwards. Okay, then steps three and four are quite quick once you've gotten to this point. So step three is to sew up the seams. And this is how the blanket goes from being a blanket into being a cardigan. So it's really simple. All you do is you fold the blanket in half so that the top edge and the bottom edge are meeting. Then you sew up the sides from the bottom corner to a certain stopping point. It explains how to figure out how long that seam should be in the pattern. And it's a seam. I know people hate seams. I also used to always hate seams because I hate mattress stitch. If you like mattress stitch, please, please use your mattress stitch. <laughs> Go ahead and mattress stitch your life away. But the way that I personally learned to stop hating seams was that I learned how to crochet my seams shut. And so if you aren't someone who crochets, that's totally fine. I made a tutorial video on how to do a crochet seam, even if you aren't someone who's ever picked up a crochet hook before. And so there's a link to that in the corner up here. Once I learned how to crochet my seam shut, it was a lot easier to do seams. I liked it a lot better. So yes, either mattress stitch or crochet your seam up to the length that's indicated in the pattern. Oh yeah, make sure you do it up both sides. And that's step three. Then the last step is to make the sleeves. In step three, what you'll have done is have seamed from the bottom corner up the sides and left a gap between the top of your seam and the fold. And those gaps are the armholes. So you pick up stitches around the armholes and you knit in the round to make the sleeves. And you do that in one by one rib. So the pattern gives instructions for how many stitches to pick up around the armhole if you're doing it in 10 ply, which is worsted weight. I will admit, this is not 10 ply. <laughs> um, I couldn't find a 10 ply yarn in my stash that was a neutral color. And given how colorful the main part of the cardigan was, I didn't want to introduce yet another color for the sleeves. The only nice gray I could find in my stash that, that I had enough of was a bulky weight yarn, which is either 12 or 14 ply. Just keep in mind that if you're doing it in a heavier weight yarn, you're gonna to wanna to pick up less stitches than it says in the pattern. And if you're doing a lighter weight yarn, you need to pick up more stitches. And yeah, just pick them up, 
and then knit in the round until it's as long as you want. You will have taken that sleeve measurement at the start of the project, but what you can also do is just try it on. At this point, you have the majority of a cardigan, so you can just keep trying it on and seeing how long you want the sleeve to be and then just stopping when you're ready. Just make sure that you make them the same length. And so once you've done both the sleeves, that's it, you're done. It is a bit of a strange construction if you haven't made a shrug before, but it's really straightforward. After you've done the sleeves and you've got your cardigan all folded up, you just open it up and the top edge of the blanket becomes the neckline and the bottom edge of the blanket ends up sitting around your hips. So I hope that was helpful. Like I said, for anyone who's a beginner, if you don't want to make any mods to the pattern, just follow the pattern as you go. For people who are comfortable making modifications, I hope this has been a good outline for the different mods you can make and the different fibers and things and choices that you can make with the pattern. And I would love to see how your projects turn out. I am not someone who is precious about people following the exact directions that I give. I really like it when people make modifications because people end up taking my patterns in directions that I could never have even imagined. And so if you do make a shrug, regardless of whether you follow the instructions step by step or whether you just use it as like a template, please let me know. I'm at Cat on Instagram. Tag me in your Instagram posts, link to the pattern with your Ravelry projects, or even just leave a comment down below with uh, some details of your project and how it went for you. If you'd like to see more from me, I do post a new video every Thursday at 7.30 Sydney time. Um, so best way to keep track of that is to just subscribe uh, to the channel. And that does actually really help me out in terms of more people finding my channel and stuff like that and it means you just won't miss a video because I know people are all in all different time zones and please like I said do leave a comment down below to introduce yourself I would really like to get to know more of the people who I'm chatting to um, but until next Thursday I'm Katrina Walser and I will talk to you then happy knitting